So we'll start with a graded color wash in our sky, and I'm using the French Ultramarine with the rose to make a purple. And then I'll add just a touch of yellow to dull that purple down. And we're going to go from purple to orange, so I may as well mix up some orange right now too so we can easily go from one to the other. And for that, I will grab some of the gold and I have my cadmium red for the warmer red. So I'm going to make some orange from those. So I'm on an angle, so I've got gravity helping to pull down my wash here. Uh, I'm just going to lay it on here quickly. And I'll dash in a couple of clouds with just using some thicker pigment, a little bit less watered down. And then go back to that lighter shade. And right at the horizon, we'll switch over to the orange. And pull that orange down underneath the first mountain, that far away distant hill. So next, we want to do the base layer for this landscape. And I'm using some turquoise mixed with that lemon yellow, and then add some of that orange mud I already made over there to dull it down slightly. And I'm going to skip over the rooftops and avoid the road also. So I just use the point part of the brush to kind of carve around my shapes. And I'm only keeping the rooftops. I'll go over everything else. And as I get to the foreground area, I'll start transitioning to the warmer gold color to give us a sense of distance. And I will also just skip a couple holes so it's broken up and not too heavy. So that softer, far away green coming into the warm gold gives you a nice sense of distance. And you can mix both of the two blues with that lemon yellow to get some nice greens. And then back to the gold to bring it forward. So I let that part dry and I'm mixing up a dirty purple by using the French Ultramarine with the warm red, the cadmium red, and then put in a bit of yellow to gray it even more. And I am getting most of the water out of the belly of the brush so that I can pull on these dry scrapes for the road. I want it to be broken up a little bit, so just running the sides of the hairs across the page quickly in that. That's what we use to create that effect. So.
I'm also going to dash in a little bit of some homemade orange mix to kind of warm up some areas in the road a little bit. We're always having some variation throughout. Now I'm going back to the purple mix. Uh, I'm using the rose and the cadmium red. And I'm having this purple be a warm purple so it's heavier on the red side. Right now I want to try to pull this background hill across with one motion all the way over. and then try not to touch it again after that. So now we'll fill in some of the details back there in the hillside and that's with that same purple color These shadows in the hills, they're not too heavy. A lot of broken up spaces in between. Now I've got this homemade dark mix and that is just barely any water and I'm trying to drop these trees on while it's wet, but mine's already a little bit dry, so I'm spritzing it just to keep things kind of soft and fuzzy. But you make your homemade dark just with a combination of the primaries and very little water. And my hillside needed a little more warmth to it, so I mixed up some more orange and just kind of scraping some more orange through there. So here I've just mixed up some more green. And I used both of my yellows and both of my blues for this. And then I'm gonna spray this green that I'm putting down so I can kind of fluff it out, soften the edges.
and I'm getting more intense now with the gold and then I'll bring in even some more of the warm red in the very foreground. Here's dashing some red into the gold. And I'm laying down my paint kind of in a scribbling sort of way so that I have motion going through these brush strokes in all directions. And I will add some of that muddy purple on top of this mix. And with my fingers, I will dip them into the water and flick my paper with some of that. And I just want lots of texture and to break up those pigments and separate them a little more. And then same for the other side. Uh, so now I need to mix some more of my dark for the foreground trees. And I've sprayed the page again so that these ones will still be a little bit fuzzy around the edges. And you can keep charging your darks as they dry because usually when you spray it with the water like that for the soft edges, it'll start drying quite a bit lighter. So I just keep dashing in more of those darks.
I'm even scraping some more darks along the roadside and into the hill a little bit, the foreground. It's helping to shape everything. Now all these trees are going to need shadows. Get a few little trunks first. And I'll put some little creases in the road so it has bends and hills. Those two got a little too close, so I'm just going to tie them together. And now some more of that dirty purple. And drop on my shadows. And once you've got enough shadows and everything's connected, I'll put in these houses. And lastly, get the liner brush out and 
Put some loose wiggly little marks for the dead trees and some fence posts. And that's that final bit of jewelry to dress this up at the end. And for these, I always try to hold the brush as far away as I can on the handle to keep it loose and wiggly. And just lightly touch the paper so it breaks up. You're not too heavy and fat. And that will do it for this one.